Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, and again, we have a gorgeous day here in San Francisco, California. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I love seeing each and every single one of you, and I've got a whole bunch of crazy, silly stories and songs for you today. So, we might as well get started, because i got a lot to share with you. All right, let's start by saying hello. Hello, how are you? Oh, hello, how are you? Oh, hello, how are you? I'm just fine today. Glad to see you here today. I'm glad to see you here today. Glad to see you here today. I'm so glad to see you. Okay, let's see. What should we do to wake ourselves up this morning? You know what we've never done? or into your pocket or into your cell phone today. I'm so excited to spend some time with you telling you some of my favorite stories. And let's start with a reading from Shel Silverstein's Where the Sidewalk Ends because you know how much I love Shel Silverstein. And this is called Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too. I told you, today's going to be a silly day. Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Went for a ride in a flying shoe. Hooray! What fun! It's time we flew, said Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Ickle was captain, and pickle was crew, and tickle served coffee and mulligan stew. As higher and higher and higher they flew, Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too, over the sun and beyond the blue. Hold on! Stay in! I hope we do, cried Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too, never returned to the world they knew, and nobody knows what happened to dear Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. There they are. They're going off in a flying shoe. Have you ever thought about going off in a flying shoe? I think that might be kind of fun. Even more fun than a rocket ship or an airplane for that matter. I love the idea of flying off in a flying shoe. Well, today I have a very interesting story for you. This is called Wash On, and it's from Epic, and it is by Michel Maranou and Manon Gauthier. And it's an interesting story that I'm, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to think about it. To Catherine, when she was five years old, and to Sophie, now, hmm, do you think that was me? With all my love, Michelle, and for my friends Azina and Chihuahua from Manon, 
I love the pictures in this book, you guys, because what they do is they mix not only drawings, but they also put in real images, like photographic images. Mr. and Mrs. Gillis have two daughters, Babette and Petronilla. Babette is perfect. Petronilla is Petronilla. She has a talent for chaos. Chaos means making things crazy. Oh, and here we see Mr. Gillis, Mrs. Gillis, Babette the Perfect, Petronilla, and the dog. I think the dog is quite cute. One day, Mrs. Gillis tried to give her daughter a bath. Wash on, said Petronilla. <laughs> Not wash on, sweetheart, said her mother. Wash off. When you wash, the mess comes off. If you wash something on, it would... Oops. Oh, dear. Do you see what happened? She got color on her. Petronilla's cheek was blue. Blue like the washcloth. Strange, murmured Mrs. Gillis. Very strange. She tried a second washcloth. Her daughter's cheek turned green. Ah! said Mrs. Gillis. Oh my goodness, look, she's got color on her too, on her hands and on her forehead. Babette and her father and the dog all came running. They found the bathroom splattered with splashes of color. Wash on, Petronilla crowed. Mrs. Gillis furrowed her eyebrows. Petronilla, say wash off this instant. Wash on, wash on, wash on, chanted Petronilla. Uh-oh, look what's happening. Do you see all that color? There's color everywhere, and Petronilla is going, wash on, wash on, wash on! After that, Petronilla, Babette, and Mr. Mr. Gillis touched everything they could find. Each time, the splotches of color transferred from one object to the other, and soon the house looked like a kaleidoscope. All those colors everywhere. Mrs. Gillis grumbled, but the others thought it was delightfully funny and a delightful day. Oh, look at her nose. The next day was not so much fun. I can't go to school like this, wailed Babette. Oh, what will happen if I shake somebody's hand, the father muttered. Everybody looked at Petronilla. Petronilla, dear, dear Petronilla, please say wash off. Petronilla had never felt so important. She smiled sweetly. Wash on. Don't panic, Mr. Gillis whispered. Petronilla will come around soon. Until then, we'll just stay inside. But Mr. Gillis was wrong. Petronilla did not come along. One day passed, then 10, then 20. The hardest part was thinking up excuses to stay in the house. And by the end of the month, Babette's teacher was threatening to alert the authorities if Babette did not come back to school at once. Oh my goodness, look at the calendar. Covered in colors. For goodness sake, Petronilla, Mrs. Gillis groaned, say wash off. We can't exactly pretend to have the plague. Wash on, wash on, wash on, sang Petronilla. Desperate times call for desperate measures, Mrs. Gillis declared. We're going to see a doctor. There must be some kind of cure for all these colors. Oh, dear. They're walking.
walking her to the doctor. Oh my goodness. The doctor was flabbergasted by the explosion of color. He tried to think of a name for the strange condition. Mm, but you have come down with acute coloritis. Oh my goodness, look at the family. Look, they're all colored. Nothing could stop coloritis. Coloritis invaded the street, the neighborhood, the town, the country, the continent, and the whole planet. It was more contagious than lice, the chicken pox, or the plague, but a lot more as ridiculous as well. Goodness gracious, look at everything. Oh my goodness, look at the world. It's colored, every bit of it. The problem was that no one could find anything among all those colors. At the Gillis house, for instance, it was hard to see the difference between the dog or the flower vase or the couch. Luckily, the dog was the only one that barked when it was time for dinner. Woof, woof. Somewhere in there is the dog. But one day, there was no barking. No greeting from the hungry dog. No kisses from a warm and sloppy tongue. Dog! 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 Mr. and Mrs. Gillis cried at the top of their lungs. Dog! cried Babette in a perfect voice. Dog! screeched Petronilla. Suddenly, Petronilla went quiet. She thought hard. Her forehead creased. And then in a small voice, she murmured, Wash off. She rubbed a corner of the table with her t-shirt and the color disappeared. Petronilla rubbed everything that she could find and shouted with all her strength. Wash off! Wash off! Wash off! After much rubbing and washing, the family found their dog at last. The poor thing had been trapped. Petronilla set him free. There he is. He's got his nose stuck underneath a chair. Decoloritis was just as contagious as coloritis. And soon the house, the street, the neighborhood, the town, the country, the continent, and the entire planet were better than ever. Oh, look, everything's back to normal. Oh, and look how happy everybody looks. The whole universe breathed a sigh of relief, except Petronilla. Sometimes she found that days were just a little bit too dull. So when Petronilla was bored, when Babette was too perfect, or when her mother insisted on washing her ears, Petronilla would say loudly, Wash on! Just put a little color into life. But these outbreaks of coloritis never lasted too long. Petronella is too afraid of losing her dog again. The dog, by the way, earned a new name after this adventure. Now he is called... Are you ready for his name? Chameleon! <laughs> And that is the story of Wash On. It's a kind of silly story, isn't it? But it also is sort of a story that kind of fits with the times that we're living through right now. We're all kind of stuck inside, just like the Gillises were. Makes you think, doesn't it? Well, I have a very silly song for you. And this song is about a bucket. And it goes like this. 
there's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza, a hole. Hmm. We'll mend it, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. We'll mend it, dear Henry, dear Henry, mend it. Well, what shall I mend it, dear Liza, dear with what shall I mend it, dear Liza? With what? With a straw, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. With a straw, dear Henry, dear Henry, a straw. But the straw is too long, dear Liza, dear Liza. The straw is too long, dear Liza, too long. We'll cut it, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. We'll cut it, dear Henry, dear Henry, cut it. Well, what shall I cut it, dear Liza, dear Liza? With what shall I cut it, dear Liza? With what? With a knife, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. With a knife, dear Henry, dear Henry, a knife. <clears throat> but the knife is too dull, dear Liza. The knife is too dull, dear Liza, too dull. We'll sharpen it, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. We'll sharpen it, dear Henry, dear Henry. Sharpen it. With what shall I sharpen it, dear Liza, dear Liza? With what shall I sharpen it, dear Liza? With what? With a stone, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. Stone, dear Henry, dear Henry, a stone. But the stone is too dry, dear Liza, dear Liza. The stone is too dry, dear Liza, too dry. Then wet it, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. Then wet it, dear Henry, dear Henry, wet it. With what shall I wet it, dear Liza, dear Liza? With what shall I wet it, dear Liza? With what? With water, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. With water, dear Henry, with water wet it. Hmm. With what shall I fetch it, dear Liza, dear Liza? With what shall I fetch it, dear Liza? With what? With a bucket, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. With a bucket, dear Henry, dear Henry, bucket. And <clears throat> there's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza, a hole. <laughs> Okay, I know. That's just a very, very silly song about two people going round and round in circles, isn't it? They got from the beginning all the way back to the end. I don't know whatever happened to Liza and Henry. I'm not sure if they ever got water in that bucket. But I certainly do know that I have a very silly story for you called Stop That Pickle. Stop That Pickle! And this story is by Peter Armour with illustrations by Andrew Satchett. Now, this is kind of a fun book because when I was much, much younger, the, the neighborhood that I used to live in, which is called Bernal Heights, the fellow who wrote this book came from there. And so it's kind of fun because it was like a local, local uh, author. Stop That Pickle by Peter R. Moore and illustrated by Andrew Satchett. Now, when I go like this, can you help me out and say, Stop That Pickle! Pickle! Just like it says right here. Stop that pickle. So when I go like this, we're all going to go, stop that pickle! Together. This book is for Fiona, the jewel princess, and to the kids at Katie Did Drive. It was lunchtime when Ms. Elmira Deeds waddled into Mr. Adolph's deli. like a pickle, please, she said. Yes, why, certainly, said Mr. Adolph, wiping his hands. He unscrewed the lid on the giant pickle jar and looked inside. There was only one fat pickle left 
floating in the brine. Mr. Adolph tried to spear the pickle with a long fork, but each time he did, the pickle swam to the other side of the jar. This pickle did not want to be eaten. Mr. Adolph was rather embarrassed by this turn of events, and he began to dig around in the drawer for some tongs. As he was doing this, the pickle climbed out of the jar on his little green legs, darted across the counter, and ran out the door. Eek! said Ms. Elmira Deeds. Whoop! There goes the pickle. No one had ever seen a pickle move quite so fast. Stop! That pickle! shouted Mr. Adolph, giving chase. Down the street, the pickle ran. Mr. Adolph quickly pooped out, and he had to sit down on the curb. Reclining on a nearby plate was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He heard the alarm, and he leapt up. Now, everyone knows a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is not the fastest sandwich in the world, but it does have great endurance. The sandwich chugged after the pickle. Stop that pickle, he shouted. As the pickle and the peanut butter and jelly sandwich passed a bake shop, a fat braided pretzel climbed down from the counter and stumbled into the street. It ran a few steps behind the peanut butter sandwich, scattering sesame seeds as it went. Stop that pickle, cried the pretzel. Enjoying the sun on a nearby tree, a lovely green pippin apple heard the pretzel's cry and shook itself loose to join the chase. It rolled down every hill it could. A crowd of toasted almonds, 17 of them, came skittering down the street. Where they came from is anybody's guess. Stop that pickle! They peeked in their tiny almond voices. A scurrying crowd of raisins and a cake donut came right behind, and the last to join the parade was a cool bottle of grape juice and an elegant vanilla ice cream cone sprinkled with chocolate. They all had one thing to say. Stop that pickle! But the pickle was too fast for all of them. He had a great time zigging and zagging and thumbing his little green pickle nose at them. Sometimes he would stop and read a newspaper to give them a chance to catch up. They were the slowest food he had ever seen. On and on went the chase, and it seemed that it would never end when, oof, round the corner, the pickle collided with a young boy. Stunned, the pickle lay there. The collision had knocked the wind out of him. Quickly, all of his pursuers gathered round. Ha <laughs> you caught the pickle, they all cried to the boy. Uh, what should I do with him, he asked. Why, eat him, of course, they shouted. They were all a little bit beside themselves. He's just a silly pickle. Now, it just so happened that the boy had been playing hard all morning long, and somehow he had misplaced his lunchbox. He was terribly hungry. He looked at the pickle, who immediately began to cry big, briny tears. The boy had a better idea. He ate the peanut butter jelly sandwich, the fat braided pretzel, the lovely green pippin apple, the 17 toasted almonds, the handful of raisins, the cake donut, and drank the bottle of grape juice, and finally he polished off the ice cream cone. The only thing left was a pickle. The boy looked at the pickle and shook his head. Who ever heard of eating pickles after ice cream? Stop that pickle! <laughs> I told you I was going to read you some silly stories today. So that is Stop That Pickle. 
And I have another silly song for you too. This one is about the rain and somebody who uses it like a shower. It goes like this. I ain't gonna rain no more, no more. I ain't gonna rain no more. How in the heck can I wash my neck and it ain't gonna rain no more? Oh dear. Let's try that together, shall we? Ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. Now how in the heck can I wash my neck when it ain't gonna rain no more? Let's think of another part of the body. Oh, how about a toe? It ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. How do you know can I wash my toe when it ain't gonna rain no more? Hmm. What about your feet? Ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. You think it's neat. How do I wash my feet? It ain't gonna rain no more. Hmm. How about shins? Ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. Now how when when I wash my shin? No more. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's try a knee. What do you think about a knee? Ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. I can't see how to wash my knee when it ain't gonna rain no more. Oh dear. What about a tummy? Ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. You think it's funny? How do I wash my tummy? Ain't gonna rain no more. Uh oh. How about an arm? Ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. I ain't got a charm to wash my arm. Ain't gonna rain no more. Oh, what about our head? Ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. I'm full of dread. How to wash my head? Ain't gonna rain no more. Cause it ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. Now how in the heck do I wash my neck when it ain't gonna rain no more? <laughs> there you have it. I think some people would be very happy not having to wash themselves, huh? Hmm. Some people don't like to take baths. I personally love to take a shower. I love it. Feels like I'm outside in the rain. Alrighty, I'm going to read you my last little story, and that is from A.A. A. Milne's When We Were Very Young with Decorations by Ernest H. Shepard. This is a story from my childhood that my grandpa used to read to me, and my grandma used to read to me, and my mom used to read to me, and I used to love this one. It's called Rice Pudding. What is the matter with Mary Jane? She's crying with all her might and main, and she won't eat her dinner. Rice pudding again. Oh, what is the matter with Mary Jane? She does not look very happy, does she? What is the matter with Mary Jane? I've promised her dolls and a daisy chain and a book about animals all in vain. What is the matter with Mary Jane? Oh, look at that. She's made quite a mess. What is the matter with Mary Jane? She's perfectly well. She hasn't a pain. But look at her. Now she's beginning again. Oh, what is the matter with Mary Jane? What is the matter with Mary Jane? I've promised her sweets and a ride in the train, and I've begged her to stop for a bit to explain. What is the matter with Mary Jane? Oh, what is the matter with Mary Jane? She's perfectly well, and she hasn't a pain. And it's lovely rice pudding for dinner again. What is the matter with Mary Jane? I have a feeling Mary Jane did not like rice pudding. Well, that's all we have for today, but I will be back tomorrow. And listen, I have been talking to some of my friends on the internet here who have said that they would like to have just single stories read and single story, songs sung. So if you have a favorite song that you would like to sing, to hear and a favorite story that you would like to hear, please put that in the comments and I will make sure to do that over the weekend and then we'll put them up on YouTube and you can listen to them anytime that you would like. But for right now, it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, Marissa. Goodbye, Allie. Oh
tomorrow with more stories and more songs. Have a good day.